Hello everyone, how's it going? Um, before I get into the video proper, I just wanted to record this uh, intro piece uh, because this is going to be an extremely uh, lengthy video. Um, I'm going to show the complete process I used to uh, basically <laughs> get my retro pie inside this uh, Mega Pie case. I figured now would be a really good time to upload this video since the uh, Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive um, Mini was just announced, and it's a dead ringer for this case. I don't know how different it'll be, um, but hey, since they just announced the case, there it is. You'll see basically my full, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, I'll unbox this item, construct it the whole nine yards. You'll see all the mistakes I made along the way, and of course, the awesome end result of uh, this project. So uh, I will leave timestamps below in the video. That way you don't have to watch this whole thing if you want to skip some sections because it will be quite long. So anyway, that's it. Uh, on to the proper video now. Hello everyone. How's it going? This is the bald metal nerd coming at you with another wonderful uh, vid. In this one, I'm going to be talking about a case from uh, Retro Flag that I just uh, got. And uh, obviously, this is the one that is designed to look like a uh, Mega Drive and or Sega Genesis. And these two, the NES and SNES Classic, will come into play a little bit, you know, very shortly. So uh, this portion is just going to be uh, the unboxing and uh, reveal of the device. But... Uh, yeah, basically, uh, just show off the box first. Exciting stuff, I know, right? So, basically, obviously, the box is supposed to look like the case itself. Now, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell tell a little uh, piece of some truth here, guys. I actually already unboxed this thing, so sorry, it's not exactly the same experience you'll get. Comes in an inner box here, and. Uh, this comes in a, uh, this comes protected as well inside the case, but, uh, I was so eager to look at this thing, I already took it out. <laughs> uh, here's some instructions it comes with, and box is empty, other than that. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead, I'll just, uh, bring this thing in nice and close for you guys, so you can get a really good view of it, and, uh, I think this is an absolutely fantastic looking case uh, for the Raspberry Pi. I mean, wow. I know there's been a lot of reviews of this on YouTube already. Uh, but, you know, I knew I wanted to get a, a different case for my, uh, retro, or, uh, my Raspberry because I've been doing a lot more with my Raspberry Pi than I did before. I'll, I'll explain all that in a, in a future video. But, man, I, I did... Since I already have a SNES and an, a SNES Classic and a NES Classic, I knew I wanted a uh, you know one that would look like a Genesis because it's obviously not a uh, retro console that's been released in the mini form yet. Although Sega is planning on releasing one, at least they're not going with at games. It'll be interesting to see uh, what that one is like. But in the meantime, um, wow, this is this is just amazing. Uh, the case just splits apart. Very easily. And uh, this is the inside. How it comes. Comes with a uh, screwdriver and some screws for assembly. And I'll give you guys a close up of the board and all that. So. Looks nice. And. Uh, Obviously, it's just the top. Yippee do, right? And then, uh, obviously, it screws together, but obviously, it just it snaps together real easy. And obviously, we have uh, you have a power power LED there. You have your contact point for the reset button and your power switch, which the buttons on the uh, case actually can control. So let's go ahead and you know, if I flip this thing to quote the on. Oh, there we go. I think flip that to the uh, okay. It's on the on position now. If I flip it to off, it'll actually flip the switch in the case to the off position. 
So, fully functional. Really cool. Uh, and of course, everyone else is showing this off. This has functionality as what well, and the reset button just depresses that blue button. You do this, you get a little storage compartment, which obviously you can use for SD cards or other really small items will fit in there. So, there you go. Might be cool to have like a few different, you know, maybe have a... I might do a uh, another micro SD card at some point in the future that's really just a Sega build, but we'll get there. Um, so anyway, uh, this case does have a little more functionality. We've got a... Uh, that's where you can put your micro SD slot in to the Pi. Come around back here, obviously we've got your DC power in, HDMI out, AV out, and what piece is the breakaway? And this piece is the breakaway if you want to put a uh, network cable in or have more USB ports. So, good amount of functionality built into this case. Um, there you go, in another last interior shot for now. Um, I did get a couple of items with this uh, case. And of course, after I bought these items, I realized that, um, of course, after I already ordered this, I saw a bundle with this stuff included uh, for less, of course, than I ended up paying, but whatever. I decided to go ahead and just get some heat sinks for my Raspberry Pi, which are in this bag and a uh, single fan, which is in this bag. So once I get to the assembly portion, I'll show all this stuff off. So uh, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to pause. I'm actually going to find my Raspberry Pi. It's somewhere in this room. I'm not sure ent entirely sure where it is. And then we'll get to assembling this bad boy. So see you guys in a little bit. All right, folks, I actually located my Pi. So now we're going to get down to, uh, obviously, we're going to do a little bit of install. So... Um, I guess what I'll install first are the uh, heat sinks that I got for the Pi. So let's go ahead and uh, it should be pretty simple to get the sticker off here of this heat sink. These were the top rated individual. And there you go. You can see it has some, uh, you know, thermal tape on it, I guess. Um, so, let's go ahead and get that, ooh, what's that, Something's, that's my other heat sink, so, go ahead and get this, actually guys, let, me, let just bear with me here, and I'm going to do this off camera because I want to make sure this is uh, nice and straight on the processor, there we go. There's what the finished product looks like. Obviously pretty simplistic. Nice and centered over the uh, processor there. Or system on a chip, rather. And uh, now we'll grab the uh, heat sink for, I guess, the uh, networking chip. And that should be a pretty similar deal. Yep. Same type of you know, adhesive. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to again do this one off camera as well here. There we go. There are the two heat sinks on their respective chips, and that's what that looks like. Now, we'll go ahead and uh, install the fan, which is a fairly simplistic process. This is the fan that I got, so what I understand is supposed to just clip in here because there's a mounting space for the fan specifically right in here so let's see the best way to route this thing we should probably put it in here like maybe like so let's see if it likes that or not 
Oh yeah, I clicked in real easy. Oh, go. Oh, yeah, that was super simple. All right, she's in. And here on your uh, fan hookup, you should see a uh, Okay, yeah, you see the uh, plus and minus there. Um, the uh, red wire goes on the plus sign, from what I understand. So let's go ahead and which size the plus? Okay, so looks like there we go. And let me just line this one up. And it looks like we now have power for the fan. Now, I don't know if this will work individually, because I didn't see this in the uh, video I actually watched about this, but I am curious. Let's go ahead and see if we can just test the fan by itself, see if it spins up. Wonder. See what happens, shall we? Oh. Nothing. Well, it could be because there's no Raspberry Pi in here either yet. <laughs> uh, so, apparently just doing that doesn't provoke, you know, okay, whatever. So, let's pull that out. And, uh, Grab the pie next. Oh, right. Before I, uh, well, I'm just doing kind of a, uh, this is a dummy setup. So, um, right, I need to secure the fan first. So, easy enough. Here are the screws that came with the fan. The fan did come with its own set of screws, by the way. So, whatever. It should be a pretty simple uh, process. And then we'll just tighten the screws. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, instead of you guys sitting through and watching me screw in four screws, I'm going to pause real quick and return. See you guys in a minute. All right, guys, I just wanted to show... Uh, uh, share a quick uh, word of caution. Um, obviously, you can see those uh, screws came with washers. Make sure you use them when you install this fan. Uh, as I tried driving this screw in without the washer, and now I didn't cause any severe damage to my case, but let's see, where is it? It's, you can probably tell I made a little dimple with it. I didn't break all the way through the plastic because obviously I stopped and backed out before I made an actual hole in it. But if you drive it all the way in, you would probably, you know, make a hole in the case. So not a big deal. That's a very minor cosmetic issue. But I just wanted to give you guys a word of caution. So be sure that you don't do what I did and you just, you know... Grab this bad boy, apply the washer, you know, or not the washer, the bolt, or the nut, jeez little Pete's, the nut, the nut, put the nut on the bolt, man, I can't talk today, the nut, I called it the washer, I meant the nut, ugh, <laughs> so do that, and then, obviously, you just, you know, pretty simplistic here. And you just drive the screw in. And we're almost done turning. We're almost done turning. All right, we're done turning. That won't go anymore. And as you can see, right here, there's no damage because we didn't go too far, so... I'm going to finish this up and be back. Just that word of caution, guys. Well, guys, I was doing a uh, test fit, and I ran into a bit of a bummer. 
the bummer is with the fan in the case, I can't have the heatsink on the uh, SOC and have the fan because, well, it kind of prevents the uh, pie from fitting in place. So, unfortunately, I suppose I'm going to have to remove the heatsink. That is a bummer. So, because I think the fan probably does more than the heatsink to eliminate heat. Thankfully, it came off real easily. That's definitely a bit of a bummer. So, now the pie should fit just fine. In there, let's make sure we don't have any thing really blocking. Let's see there. Yeah, careful of the wires. I've got to be careful of wires, folks. Yeah, it fits in. Uh, it fits in fine. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, say la vie. So uh, that's just a quick little warning. Uh, be careful about which heat sinks you buy. Um, I will. Man, it doesn't seem like. There's much space at all between the. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a little bit of space between the processor and the and the fan, but very little. So don't. So if you're gonna get a heatsink to, to use with this case, make sure you get one that's a bit shorter than this one. This one's just too tall. I may eventually get a different heatsink, but uh, oh well. At least it was very cheap. So. Too bad I can't use this aluminum heat sink. I am slightly disappointed, but um, I will show you guys uh, the correct way to um, attach this up to the Pi. Uh, you see the GPI opens there. Um, you see that red cable? You want it to go all the way to the right, roughly like so. And you're also going to want to plug in those USB leads. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll do the top one thusly. And we'll do the bottom one thusly. Okay, and then we just kind of, you know, finagle everything in together. So let's go ahead and yeah, truthfully, folks, this is probably going to take me a minute. And who really wants to watch me struggle with cords? So once I get all that uh, together, I will be back. So see you guys in a second. All right, guys, I went ahead and uh, got this bad boy, you know, lined up. The easiest way to do this is you kind of, you know, line the HDMI cable in and, you know, uh, I'm sorry, HDMI port, and then just bas basically make sure you're not pushing on any cables, and then you kind of, you know, can kind of finagle it in there. And the screws you're going to want to use to secure the Pi into the unit are actually the two shortest screws that this uh, kit comes with. Because uh, basically it comes with two sizes of screws. you got long ones and short ones. You're going to want to use the short ones. And uh, for this piece. So what you're going to do next. Is you're going to push your pie down. And then just screw this screw in right here. Maybe. Come on. Yeah. Is that lined up? I don't think I'm even lined up, guys. And I'm not pinching anything. Okay, let's try. Uh, let's try the other side. Let's try the other side.
There we go. That one's got some... Yeah, okay. Oops. Knocking the camera there. Let's find the other short screw. Okay, there's the other short screw. All right. Okay, that's not lining up. So guys, I'm, again, I'm gonna have to pause and just do this off camera and then I'll be back. But you get the general gist here. Be right back. Well guys, that was fairly easy to resolve. Um, all I had to do was give this thing a slight push forward. That snapped it into place, then I was easily able to secure that screw. And obviously, she's secure in there. But I think I might have found a place for my uh, heat sink to go. There's a chip here. <laughs> so let's see if this will work, just for fun. Let's see if let's see if the piece goes together or not. So let's turn this here. Turn this around. Looks like it might work. Might be in the op. Ah, sadly no. Oh well. That dream died quickly. So it was worth a try. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a, a smoke test and uh, make sure this thing powers on before we fully assemble it. So let's go ahead and plug a USB lead in. And since there's no micro SD card in here, it doesn't matter if I, uh, you know, just do straight powers, ons and offs. Oh, it helps if I'm plugged into a USB lead that has power. That's the only one on my desk. It's not plugged into my powered hub. <laughs> so let's go ahead and you lined up correctly. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see what we got here. Got a power LED. You can't see it, but you might be able to hear it. We got a spinning fan. So, success! Hooray! So, uh, what I'm going to do next, guys, is I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to install the um, safe shutdown script, uh, because that's kind of the whole point. Um, because there's a uh, rocker switch in here, which basically has, you know, for the safe shutdown, on or off, and... Um, <clears throat> we're going to obviously, we're going to want that on because uh, that's kind of part of the whole part and parcel of this case. So next part is you'll be looking at my screen. We'll be uh, in via putty and we'll be doing the script. So see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, now that I got a keyboard, I was able to get into that menu. So let's go ahead and go into SSH, what I like, SSH to be enabled, yes, I would, SSH server is enabled, fantastic, alright, so now, back to Windows we go, come on, show my screen, thank you. Now, where's my putty? Putty, putty, putty. There it is. Let's try this again. 9268111.121. We're going to cooperate. Yeah. Okay. And what is the default use? Ah, default username is huh, pi. And looks like the default password is raspberry. Hooray. All right, well, all I should have to do now is copy and paste the, uh, the 
the command there, which is right there. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Looks like she's working. Fantastic. Well, guys, when it finished, um, we kind of got an auto reboot there. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't expect that, but that's apparently what occurred. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, power this off via the menu. And we'll shut down the system. And uh, there we go. See on a kill switch. On a let's let's do the kill switch there. There we go. Okay, that killed it entirely. So. All right, so now we're going to take uh, this and we're going to flip the safe shutdown to the on position. Since we got that uh, script installed. So there you go. And let's make sure the power switch is in the off position. It is. And then we'll just... Make sure the power... The switch on this is off as well as on the case. The, the, the power switch on the case is off. And then you just kind of obviously put them together here. Well, the case should just snap together now, in theory. In theory, come on now, case. Don't, don't give me no troubles. All the cases give me troubles. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, oh. All right, guys. Again, quick pause. Back when I got this successfully done. Well, guys, it wasn't the case that was the problem. It was me being a dunderhead. Unfortunately, my micro... When you put this case together, make sure you take your micro SD card out. I didn't, and uh, this is the consequence of that action. My micro SD card is cut in half. And sadly, um, this was a 128 gig card, so not a not a cheap one, uh, like 40 bucks down the toilet. So, yikes. So, guys, obviously this is going to put the video on a little bit of hold until I get another micro SD card to put in this damn thing, so... I'll do that, be back, and show you stuff. So, see you in a day or so, I guess. Alright guys, here we are uh, the next day, and I've gotten a... I actually took the opportunity today to buy two 128-gig uh, micro SD cards. I managed to snag them for 30 bucks each, so not a bad price. Um, I've got one of the 128-gig cards here. In the uh, storage case for the, um, you know, the storage area of the case, and I got the other 128 gig card actually in my phone uh, because I had a 64 gig card in my phone before, so I thought, hey, whatever, I'm buy one, might as well buy two. So I dropped the bigger one in my phone. Uh, I took that one out of my phone, and I decided to basically have two retro pie images. Uh, the one that's in there right now, the 64 gig, is going to be an all Sega uh, image, basically. Um, I've already downloaded, I I'll detail, I I'll show off what's in it uh, in the next part of the video and everything, because uh, you'll see this completed and, and fully customized. So I, I got a little bit to go, but definitely have made a huge amount of progress uh, from where I was. Uh, obviously, I, I went ahead and uh, I installed RetroPie, and I did... Uh, all that's on there. I don't have any ROMs on there yet whatsoever. Um, all I did was basically set up RetroPie, uh, connected it to Wi-Fi, expanded the uh, file system, and updated it and enabled SSH uh, because any commands I'm going to do, I'll 
because when you first set up RetroPie, you got to use a keyboard. Nuts to that, I say. <laughs> so uh, you're going to want to turn on SSH uh, so you can get into this thing remotely. But uh, one thing that I did, of course, was I downloaded the uh, safe install scripts and I flipped the safe shutdown to the on position and it works perfectly. So first I'm going to demonstrate the reset button. What happens? You're going to see me hit the reset button right there and it will just reboot the Pi. And it works absolutely perfectly. Exactly what you would expect a reset button to do. Absolutely fantastic. If you do this correctly, it will just work. Um, and it's a pretty simple procedure to get this script working in RetroPie. Um, and then, of course, we've got the on-off switch. So I'll flip the switch to the off position. The power goes off or starts to, you know, it's, it's doing the safe shutdown thing. And the Pi is now off. The fan has stopped. The power, it's no longer outputting the display, so this is going to automatically switch back to my PC now. Momentarily. Should. There you have it. So anyway, I'm going to pause real quick, uh, really get this thing loaded down with some Sega stuff, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, here I have the uh, Mega Pie case, obviously, uh, on my uh, TV stand there next to my NES SNES Classic Edition, and I think it fits in absolutely great next to those systems. I know it's a bit dark, so I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can really get a good view of this. And uh, there's my uh, Genesis-style controller. So, um... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show off the uh, large 128 gig image I downloaded for uh, RetroPie. It comes with all sorts of uh, ROMs. Uh, what you're looking at right here is the uh, n first Ninja Turtles arcade game. So let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess I uh, chose Leonardo somehow. Go ahead and, uh... And as you can see, we got a border around the game, which is pretty cool to make it look more like, it, you know, the actual arcade machine, which is a nice little touch. Plus, you can see they're trying to make the shape of the, uh... I gotta figure out my controls here. So you can figure out the, uh... Basically, they're trying to make it look more like a CRT. Let's see if I can... There we go. Angle that for you. Forgot my controls already. Where's the attack button? Which? Okay, there it is. That's jump. That's attack. Okay. Jeez. All right. I think I failed enough of that game. You're gonna see. So those are the arcade ROMs. Uh, it also comes with a ton of Atari games, uh, 2600, 7800, Lynx, and uh, they all—all all of these systems have their own. Here, I'll go ahead and pull up Lynx. It should have its own unique uh, background here. Come on, and that's pretty neat. Again, I don't know my controls, clearly. Is that attack? Okay. I never owned a Lynx back in the day, so... But, you know, this is what this looks like. Yay. Alright. Moving on to the next uh, point of interest. There's ColecoVision. 
we actually get uh, Daphne, which is like Dragon's Lair and Space Space Ace and all that. I'd show you that, but those games take a little time. Not not particularly long, but a little longer than I want to spend on the... Uh, you got the Famicom, which is the Ninten or, uh, Japanese NES, and Famicom Disk, which is, of course, uh, that was a ex Japanese exclusive system. Let's see if we hear that famous... Uh, New Zelda music uh, in the emulator. Okay, I guess it's loading the image. Exciting stuff, guys, I know. Oh, there it goes. Let's see if we can... Yep. They're the sweet extra tones that aren't in the uh, American... Oh, that sounds awesome. Coincidentally, guys, uh, The Legend of Zelda was the first game I ever got video game I ever got with my original NES. I mean, of course, it came with uh, Mar Super Mario Brothers, but The Legend of Zelda, this, uh, well, the American version, was the first extra video game I ever got in my entire life, so... Just a personal point there. Let's see uh, if the music's different when you get into the game. And I'm hitting buttons and... Maybe it's not properly set up for this emulator. Fine. Alright. Whatever. Moving on. I have to try a different controller with that, but that's probably my fault. Even got some Game and Watch, Game Gear, Game Boy. Let's see what that uh, one looks like real quick. I bet it has a neat background to it. Oh, I dig it. Get a nice big bold uh, photo of the Game Boy, and you get some Mario and Luigi around it. That's pretty cool. Of course, if you wanted to take up the full screen and all that, you can always turn off these overlays and uh, you know. If you so choose. Personally, I like these overlays, but of course, your mileage may vary. Okay, there we go. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Intellivision, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, which of course is just Genesis. Mega Drive Japan, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Japanese exclusive ROMs, N64. Uh, N64 is a bit controversial on um, Raspberry, I'm sorry, on the uh, Pi 3. It do, from what I understand, it doesn't run very well. Now, I haven't tried any of these out yet, so I'm not sure uh, how it would go. Let's try F0 real quick, just for fun. See how it rolls. Oh, sound is choppy as hell. <laughs> yeah, N64 is a bit beyond the Pi's uh, capabilities, at least to do smoothly, from what I understand. Neo Geo will run just fine. Um, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Pocket Color. And, of course, the most... Uh, you got the Turbo Graphics, also known as the PC Engine in Japan. Ports, I guess those are DOS ports. Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein, ah, cool stuff. Some uh, PS1 games. PS1 games pretty much run perfectly. 
on this uh, system. Let's uh, we'll just do we'll just jump into Crash Bandicoot real quick. We should have a real good experience on this. So far, so good. Everything's smooth as silk. In fact, I think they used the same emulator, um, the PCS X rearmed, I think, on the uh, PlayStation Classic. Yep, it's real responsive, it's running smoothly. Uh, this is an extremely uh, satisfactory experience. Alright, so that's PlayStation 1. Those are just your RetroPie options. Sega 32X, Sega CD, which we'll be getting to. Super Famicom, which is the uh, Japanese Super Nintendo. Uh, Sega SG-1000, American Super Nintendo, Super Graphics, that's an NEC variant, Turbo Graphics 6 CD, Turbo Graphics 16, okay, Vectrex, Virtual Boy, and this is actually not a bad uh, experience, way better than playing a real Virtual Boy, actually. I'll go ahead and pull it up just to show it off real quick. I really like the overlay they uh, threw in with uh, the Virtual Boy. I mean, that's much, you know, obviously it's, they're trying to make it look like a VR headset, and uh, it looks fine. Ah. Koopa just landed on my head. Oh, well. So. Wonder Swan, which is... I never played a Wonder Swan. And there we go. Well, and that's pretty much it. That's everything that's on this image in a uh, nutshell. I will link, or I'll put in the video description the name of the image. And the reason you're seeing that white spot on the TV, that's just the light from the camera because it's a little bit dark down here. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick, guys, is I'm going to load in my uh, different SD card, which actually has the Sega image on it. And, uh, cause this is a 128 gig card, but the Sega image is on a 64 gig card, so I'm gonna switch it up and I'll be right back. Alright guys, here we are with the, uh, Sega image, uh, loaded into the, uh, Pi. And the default theme basically gives you a, uh, basically classic, a Sega Genesis classic, uh, look. And feel like this was an actual, you know, console, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're starting off on the uh, Mega Drive, which of course is just the Genesis. And for authenticity, I would highly recommend getting a controller similar to this one. But you're going to want to get a six-button Genesis uh, type of controller, uh, mostly just because you're going to want to um, uh, you know, for fighting games like Street Fighter and etc. I'm just trying to get to Sonic here real quick so you guys can see how it runs. Um, now, the biggest problem with the default theme is obviously you can only see three game titles at once, which is a bummer, so... Now, you know what? Let's do some Streets of Rage 2 instead. Let's do that instead of Sonic. 
you get this cool little Sonic uh, loading screen here. What the heck happened to the Sega Genesis backdrop? Oh well, whatever. There was a uh, Genesis <laughs> frame around, but whatever. And then we'll go with uh, Axel real quick, I guess. Whatever. And as you would expect, it looks great. Sounds great. Fantastic gameplay experience, as you'd expect. And it feels just like a Genesis because of the controller. I think you've watched me play this game long enough. <laughs> so that's Genesis performance. Uh, since this is a standard RetroPie um, install, you of course can load. Now it doesn't come with any ROMs for any systems that aren't Sega based. But since this is a standard RetroPie uh, system, you can of course load uh, ROMs for any system that RetroPie natively supports very easily. And I just thought it would be funny to put uh, Mario Brothers 2 on here. On a Sega themed image, haha. -ha. Right. And as you can see, obviously it plays just like you'd expect with me sucking. And, but the problem is, it doesn't show the system name. There's of course the RetroPie image, or options 32x. It comes with, by the way, this comes with a complete ROM set for basically all Sega systems before Saturn. It comes with a complete ROM set for, uh, well, everything you see. There's a Sega CD. It works perfectly fine. SG-1000. That's the SNES. <laughs> um, and the cool thing it comes with, it comes with some Sega arcade games. Now... I wouldn't recommend only using a Genesis controller for these Sega arcade games. I would recommend a controller like this, and what I mean like this is one with some uh, thumbsticks, uh, because not all of the arcade games work properly with the uh, Genesis-style controller. So let's go ahead and... Now obviously this is going to perform just like the arca actual arcade game. Yeah, this one does have the filters. And you gotta love consistency. One thing I don't like about this image, uh, though, is if you change settings that are unrelated, it will change, for some reason, change, or seemingly unrelated, it will change other settings. Let's see if the Game Gear still has that backdrop on it. It doesn't. <sighs> That's all right, so let's go ahead and get out of Game Gear. There's the Master System. And of course, if you don't care for this style, I like the way it looks, but the functionality is kind of poor, so you can only see three options at once. But you can always easily just change it to a different theme. I, kinda, I, I do like the Sega Show one, which is a little different than... Uh, what we had here, because now you basically get this when you select each one, which is still Sega themed, but you get a lot more functionality because obviously you can see a lot more of the games at once than three. So that is a nice. <laughs> if you deign to put non Sega systems on here, you just get, you know, that. So, uh, 
And then, of course, if you want, you can always just go with the straight, um, standard Retro Pie one. Which we've all seen a million times because it's just Retro Pie. So, that's basically it. Uh, for me showing off the images and like I said, I will link them both in the uh, description below now This image does have a few other flaws aside from the oops. I hit the wrong wrong thing No, instead of trying to turn down my volume switch my inputs there on the receiver but anyway, um My TV didn't like that I guess <laughs> whatever um, So basically the main one of the other issues is some things in this image, uh, some of the options and all that are not in English, but they're pretty easy to figure out because most of them are, so there are just some irritations with this uh, image that I'm not wild about, but I think overall it's a cool image, especially for what it comes with, especially if you have this case and you want to ha have something very Sega focused, it's very cool for that, so I'll be back uh, with a few final words. All right, to everyone who's still watching and made it this far into the video, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know this was quite lengthy, but I wanted to basically show all the trials and tribulations of, uh, you know, putting this thing together, or just to give you an in-depth look, and, of course, the final result. Now, this video, hell, it was a few months in the making, honestly. Uh, so, it's something I filmed over time. <laughs> But I'm really happy with the end result. So basically, to summarize, I think the Raspberry Pi is an excellent platform for retro gaming. And this case is an excellent choice if you have a Raspberry Pi and you want it to look like a Sega Genesis. I would say it's worth the cost, and it works really, really well. That's it. As always, if you like this, thumbs up. If you hate me, thumbs down. Share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Live long and prosper.